Hello friends, followers and channel members. Welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in the Airbus A320neo. In today's video we are going to be looking at noise abatement departure procedures and how to fly them and what they are. There's also different versions of the noise abatement departure procedures so we're going to have a look at the two most common ones in this video today. So what are noise abatement departure procedures? They are essentially rules and methods that airports put into place to reduce noise pollution around the airport environment to the residents and businesses in the airport area. Pilots have to follow these departure procedures and airports have noise monitoring equipment around the airport and they can fine the airlines if they don't obey these rules. So pilots need to know how to fly these strict noise abatement departure procedures to ensure that those rules are followed and everybody is happy. So let's head inside and have a look at how we find the information regarding these procedures and how we program them into the flight management computer. So we're sat on the ground at runway 19 right here in Stockholm and we're all set to go. What I'm going to show you now is how we put in the information required for the most common noise abatement departure procedure and that is the noise abatement departure procedure 2. If you've watched any of my live streams in the past you'll know I'll refer to noise abatement departure 1, noise abatement departure 2, but noise abatement departure 2 is the most common one that we fly. Just for a little bit of background then, what happens when we depart is you'll set takeoff thrust, so that will either be toga or a flex takeoff if that's being calculated. And then once we get to a certain altitude, we'll pull the thrust levers back and pop them into the climb detent. At which point we also want to start accelerating away from the airport. But how do we know when the climb detent is required and when we start accelerating away from the airport. If we have a look at the McDo, you'll see on the performance page you have thrust reduction and acceleration. So on a noise abatement departure 2, most airlines around the world, every airline is different, they all have different standard operating procedures, but what a lot of airlines will have in their standard operation procedures is they will set the thrust reduction to 1,500 feet above the airport elevation. So the airport elevation here in Stockholm, which we can get from charts if you have them, is 138, so about 140 feet rounded up. So if we were going to do that, then we would set our thrust reduction, if we were going to set it at 1500 feet above that, it would obviously be 1638 or rounded up 1640. Now, with the SOPs that I use, some airlines have the thrust reduction value set to 1000 feet above airport elevation, which actually makes the mental arithmetic a little bit easier. So if the airport elevation is 138, then we're just going to add a thousand to that. So we will just pop in 1138, or if you were going to round that up, of course, 1140. You'll see that when you come in and load into the simulator, it automatically adds these values and they're not too far away, to be fair. But if you do have the charts, you can become even more accurate. So that's going to be the value I'm going to put in at the thrust reduction and that is the altitude that we're going to pull our thrust lever back to the climb detent once we have departed. So what about the acceleration then? Well for a noise abatement departure procedure 2, which is what we're going to perform in a moment, the thrust reduction and the acceleration happen at exactly the same time. So we can put the same value in just there. And as you can see, the aircraft has rounded it up to uh, 1140. So it sounds a little bit contradictory because we're going to reduce thrust at 1140 feet, but we're also going to accelerate at 1140 feet. Well, there's only one way that we can make the aircraft accelerate, and that is to lower the pitch 
of the aircraft, the attitude of the aircraft. So we're going to lower the nose once we get to this altitude, and that will then allow the aircraft to, sell uh, to accelerate away, and it will get us nice and, uh, nice and far away from the airport as, uh, as fast as possible. So if you want to use the same SOPs that I do and only have 1,000 feet um, above the airport elevation for your thrust reduction, there's a great way to be able to change this. If you go to the Do menu and then go to Options and go to the FMGC, here you can set thrust reduction 1,000 feet above, acceleration 1,000 feet above, and also the engine out acceleration, which we've not spoke about in this video, uh, but that's also 1,000. Ideally, you want all of these values to be the same. And as I say, many airlines operate on 1,500 feet above airport elevation. Just the airline SOPs that I replicate here in the simulator have it set to 1,000. By default, it is 1,500, so if I've gone in and edited this. So we're going to perform this departure now. This is the noise abatement departure 2. It's 1,000 feet above the airport elevation. And with the wonderful coding from the fly-by-wire team, we are just going to be able to follow the flight directors. So the flight directors, as you know, are the green crossbars that will appear as we start to, uh, as we start to depart. So all I'm going to do as well is just set a, uh, an altitude of 10,000 feet, so we've got somewhere to aim for. Of course, that would automatically be given you normally on either the charts or by air traffic control. And now we're set to go. So we're going to release the brakes, push the uh, thrust to uh, toga power, and then when we get to 1,140, we'll see climb thrust flashing on the top left of the FMA, and we're going to reduce our thrust to climb detent but before that we're going to start lowering our nose so that we get our accelerator away it both happens at the same time so let's watch that happen in the simulator so as you can see we've just set 50% and one now let's go toga we've got man toga SRS back and we're now centered passing v1 in a moment and we'll pull up and away so we're aiming for between 15 and 17 and a half degrees pitch there we go get that landing gear up and you can see the green crossbars are nicely centered so we're happy to leave that just there watching the altitude then we're now coming through 900 feet 1,000 feet, and we're looking for about 1,000, and there it is. So we've got lever climb flashing. As you can see, the green bar's going down, so we're going to lower that nose, and then we're going to pop in the climb detent for the thrust, and we'll see that that, once we've got that in the right place, we'll say thrust climb. The nose is now lowered from where it was when we took off, and of course if we're flying the departure correctly, we'd make a right hand turn to ensure that we're following the, uh, the SID. So then is a noise abatement departure 2. Nice and straightforward where the thrust reduction and acceleration happens at exactly the same time. But what about the other version, the noise abatement departure one well I'm just going to quickly reset the simulator and we'll have a quick look at that so if we restart this and I'll explain about the noise abatement departure procedure one so with a noise abatement departure procedure one the thrust reduction is still the same either 1,000 feet or 1,500 feet depending on which airline standard operation procedures you wish to follow however the acceleration happens at a different value. Normally, the acceleration happens at 3,000 feet above the, uh, the airport elevation. So, in this case, if we were to perform a noise abatement departure procedure 1, then we would look to be flying the thrust reduction at 1,140 feet. 
but the acceleration wouldn't happen until 3140 feet. So let's go in and see how that would be done. Now as you can see we just need to very quickly set up the um, set up the McDo just here so I'm just going to pop in a couple of airports otherwise the aircraft's automated system won't work correctly and now let's have a look at just setting these up oh we need to go to the performance page for that and here we go so still going to do a flat one departure and we can calculate those v-speeds again just so the aircraft knows what it's operating to and this becomes a little bit more important with regards to a noise abatement departure procedure one and I'll explain why in a minute so thrust reduction can remain as it was for the noise abatement departure procedure two that doesn't change so with the SOPS I'm using it's one one four zero but the acceleration is now going to become three one four zero so now the aircraft has been told that thrust reduction is going to happen at the same point we're still going to go into the climb detent at 1140 feet but we are not going to accelerate away until 3140 feet the only way then that we can ensure the aircraft doesn't accelerate away is to maintain that high pitch of around 15 to 17 and a half degrees and the flight directors do a fantastic job of showing this so there's our airport elevation just to confirm that and what's going to happen is when we do depart you'll see on the FMA that we set our thrust so Mantoga and then in the second part of the FMA over here we have SRS that's basically telling us that the aircraft is commanding a speed of V2 plus 10 between 10 to 20 knots so it's a safe speed to fly and is going to maintain that command of SRS V2 plus 10 or 20 knots until we get to 3140 feet so let's have a look at how that would work I just need to set an altitude there as well so there we are we're all set to uh, we're all set to go I've got a couple of things just to sort out on the uh, TO config page as I've reset the simulator there we are and check we've got flaps one showing that's it so we can release the parking brake so this is a noise abatement de departure procedure number one the idea with this is it gets the aircraft up high away from the airport before it accelerates away so let's set 50% N1 and now once that's uh, once that's stabilized we'll go to Toga so there we go Mantoga SRS and SRS is going to maintain until 3140 feet so there's 100 knots V1 and rotating now so still up to around 15 and a half degrees we can get that gear up don't worry too much about the lateral flight path at the moment for this video we're just concentrating on the horizontal for our pitch attitude so we're there currently at 17 and a half degrees lever climb is flashing so we're going to set the climb detent but this time we are not going to lower the nose if we load the nose we would start to accelerate away and we don't want to do that until 3140 feet and as you can see SRS is still shown so this bar here is giving us the correct attitude to still target V2 plus between 10 and 20 knots so any moment now that green line will lower and now it tells us that we're entering the climb phase so it's now setting climb thrust and 
targeting a speed, the climb speed, of 250 knots. And there we go. The noise of it departure procedure 1 has now been flown. At which point I can pop the autopilot on. And once passing S speed, just like any other departure, we will get the flaps up and disarm the spoilers. So, where do we find the information with regards to how uh, and which departure we need to fly? Well, that is only usually found on the charts. So, here in Stockholm, Arlanda, you can see that noise abatement 2 is recommended for all standard instrument departures, whereas flying to Warsaw, if you're departing out of Warsaw, noise abatement departure procedure number 1 is performed when departing out of Warsaw. So every airport has different departure procedures. There are some airports which don't follow these strict rules of either noise abatement departure procedure 1 or 2 and they have some specific rules where they actually give you the figures which you need to fly. Ordinarily these figures that are given are always in feet above ground level but sometimes we need to interrogate those just to uh, just to make sure. However, I uh, hope this video has uh, has been useful to you and explained the difference in how we fly the different noise abatement departure procedures one and two. Number two is the most common, and if you can't find any information with regards to the noise abatement departure procedures in the charts, then the chances are it is going to be a noise abatement departure procedure number two that you're going to be doing, in which case thrust reduction and acceleration values are exactly the same. Thanks very much for watching guys, please do hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our live streams or new videos that will be uploaded in the future. Big thanks for watching and I shall see you all in the next video. Bye bye for now.